Hello, and welcome yet again to another lovely session of Civil Engineering with Tanya J. Laird. I am the aforementioned Tanya J. Laird. As you can certainly tell from the video title, this video is going to be a bit different from our usual fare. This video is not going to focus on our normal uh, educational series, rather this video is going to focus on a recent event, a recent structural collapse that occurred in the US. This video will cover the background of the event, as well as explorations of some of the implications in engineering practice and American infrastructure in general uh, from this particular uh, event. I thought we would start by going on a little tour. So, uh, welcome. Welcome to County Road 611 in Osage County, Missouri. This is definitely uh, different from our usual fare. A lot of, uh, uh, in case you haven't uh, noticed, a lot of the videos that you see sometimes on my channel come from uh, around the locations, of, around various locations of Corvallis, Oregon, and this is definitely quite far from here. Um, but anyway, still a kind of lovely, idyllic little country back lane. Just uh, let's just go along this little country back road for a while. So just a few, uh, obviously just a small, you know, one, one and a half lane gravel road, uh, lots of trees along the side built up here and there, an occasional driveway, you know, lots and lots of trees, etc. Uh, etc. So, again, this is County Road. This is a very slight, small road, County Road 611 or 611 in uh, Osage County, Missouri. And this is where it crosses over a little body of water, or a little stream referred to as Mary's River. And here we have a, here we have the bridge in question. It's just a small, very old, kind of traditional uh, one-lane rural bridge, kind of which, the, the kind of which there are really uh, you know, probably tens of thousands scattered across the country. So, oh, just a nice little tiny country bridge uh, that you can see here, just going over this quaint little river. And you can see the uh, other approach to the bridge here. What the way this works is there's, uh, if we go back here, we can see it a little better. Oh, actually, we just kind of skip over it, I guess. Anyway, there's the main span here, and then there are, um, two or three smaller spans uh, at a much lower elevation, not over the main uh, river, or not, not over the main stream of the river. But uh, as you go down, you can you can kind of see the secondary spans here. This location you're actually above, uh, above the ground as well. And again, this is just kind of a small, light little uh, country, country lane bridge. And you can see a lot of, uh, you know, farms around here. Just the classic kind of scene you could find in rural areas throughout the country. In fact, you can see a lot of this kind of scenery if you go just outside of where I live, with it, which is in Corvallis, Oregon. So again, this bridge is on a small uh, country lane. It carries County Road 611 across Mary's River in Osage County, Missouri. It is a single lane bridge with a main span of 145 feet, and uh, historically, it's, uh, it was built by the Kansas City Bridge Company in 1893. It's gone by a few names, including the Big Mar uh, Mary's Bridge, the Pentecostal Bridge, and a few others. Now, um, as you can clearly see here, it definitely shows its age. Um, it's one, but however, this is one case where the phrase, they don't make it them like they used to, certainly holds quite literally true. Uh, you can zoom in here and actually see that uh, even the abutments uh, on, well actually, I suppose if we go around and maybe we can take a look at them. Uh, yeah, here you can see some of the abutments here, and we'll get a better look at them later. But you can actually see that the uh, abutments are definitely something from another time. Uh, they're not actually made of concrete or, um, uh, or you know, concrete block or something. They're actually made of uh, cut stone. So something definitely from another time. Uh, other things to note: it, the entire bridge is covered in decades of rust, and you can see uh, from the numerous rivets along the uh, main uh, cords of the bridge that this is that the main cords are clearly something from another time. We definitely don't make uh, bridges with rivets like this anymore, or at least very rarely so. Uh, again, let's see. So it has one main span and then three smaller spans, of, uh, as we have noted, and the overall uh, layout looks like, as you can see here in this uh, drawing. Still, this bridge is certainly a stately old lady. This bridge may not be up to modern standards, but old structures still have their uses. Uh, considering the surrounding area, this bridge likely doesn't receive heavy traffic, 
And like all such bridges, it does undergo periodic inspections. Uh, in fact, an, ins an inspection occurred just last week, and the bridge wasn't closed, and it was found to be in adequate shape for its age. Uh, and actually, interestingly enough, I found this here. Here is a postcard of the bridge from an obviously earlier era. Uh, think about this bridge and the, the time span, the, the, just the span and stretch of history that this, is, that this is seen. This is what this bridge was built to carry. Horse-drawn wagons driven by turn of the century, uh, turn of the 20th century farmers in rural Missouri. Now, I was able to find some uh, inspection data on this bridge, and you can find some links to that in the description below. Uh, data is available from a 2017 inspection report, and at first, its condition does seem alarming. Uh, its overall condition was rated as poor, its superstructure condition was rated as serious, its substructure was rated as poor, and its deck was rated as satisfactory. Uh, the structural appraisal stated, quote, basically intolerable, requiring high priority of replacement. However, bridge reports like this, uh, bridge inspection reports like this, need to be considered carefully. Or, more specifically, you need to be aware of the kind of criteria that are being applied. The inspector in the 2017 report in the work recommended section suggested, quote, replacement of bridge or other structure because of substandard load carrying capacity or substantial roadway geometry. In other words, this bridge does very poorly when assessed according to modern criteria. It doesn't even come close to meeting modern standards for lane width, carrying capacity, etc. When judged by the criteria of a modern highway bridge, this bridge really is basically intolerable. The deck appraisal was a bit more forgiving, stating, quote, somewhat better than minimum adequacy to tolerate being left in place as is. Man, I'm just going to read that again. Somewhat better than minimum adequacy to tolerate being left in place as is. Man, I really love engineer speak. It's just absolutely wonderful. So, considering its poor ratings, uh, why wasn't this bridge torn down a long time ago? Well, consider the surroundings. There's a reason I started this video doing a bit of a tour to the approach of the bridge. The 2017 report states that this bridge only experiences about 50 vehicle crossings a day. It's on a tiny country back road. Replacing it would cost a great deal of money, and funds for such things are always tight. The 2017 report estimated that replacing it would cost approximately $1.3 million. There are thousands of bridges like this across the U.S. Replacing them all would perhaps be ideal, but actually achieving that would be impractical. So, how do we as engineers handle these older subpar structures? Well, a clue can be seen here on the Google Maps uh, Street View. As can be seen here in the Google Street View, uh, there is a clearly posted sign. Uh, there is a clear label on both sides of the bridge. This bridge is weight limited to five tons. So uh, let's talk about how this works. Well, inspecting engineers will determine the state of a bridge considering any deterioration present. Uh, for example, if rust has eaten, say, a quarter of an inch into some structural element, they will then they will note that and then they will calculate the element's reduced section properties. So, maybe a, originally a per given piece of steel was an inch thick, and it, ha and it had a certain moment of inertia or, or cross-sectional area. Well, they'll go and recalculate those section properties, considering the uh, now existent uh, state of the bridge. So, um, again, they'll calculate each element's reduced section properties. Then, these modified section properties are used to calculate the bridge's ultimate load capacity. So you take those modified section properties and use them to recalculate the ultimate load capacity. So the bridge, uh, as originally designed, may have been able to carry, you know, a certain number of tons. But once you actually go, you take a, you take stock of the current state of the bridge and you recalculate its new capacity or its present day capacity based upon any damage that is present. Uh, then, it, what you do is you apply a safety factor or a load factor, um, and the rated weight is then posted. So, especially for these older bridges, there's a lot of uncertainty, so a large adjustment factor would probably be used. Now, I'm not familiar enough with this bridge and how it was load, uh, uh, load rated, but uh, since this bridge was rated at 5 tons, if I had to spitball a guess uh, on the calculated capacity, 
I would say if you were to go and actually measure the thickness and any deterioration, if it's rated at five tons, I would say you would, if you, if you did that kind of analysis, you would probably find that the predicted capacity is 10 to 15 tons or so. So uh, again, if the, on um, any kind of old, uh, partially deteriorated structure, there's always a large amount of uncertainty. So you may decrease that uh, 10 to 15 ton calculated capacity by a large margin down to say five tons. Also, you might consider the um, consequences of failure. If this bridge were to collapse, then somebody would go be going into the river, which would be uh, which would certainly ruin someone's day. And this is fundamentally how we handle older structures, especially bridges. They may not be up to modern design standards, and they may have some deterioration. So we recalculate their capacity, apply some hefty margin for uncertainty, and then weight rate them. And this rating, interestingly enough, is not just a curiosity. That, that, that sign there, that weight limit five tons, is not just there for, uh, you know, safety and convenience. That is a, a, a sign just like any other road sign. It's there, just like a speed limit, just like a, uh, you know, stop sign, etc. That uh, load rating has the force of law. Legally, you are not allowed to drive a vehicle over the posted weight onto uh, onto the bridge. To do so is a violation of state uh, a violation of state law. So again, we, we when we calculate and rate, uh, weight a, or rate a bridge's capacity, uh, we create a recommendation that then becomes uh, posted, and that posted uh, weight limit has the force of law. So why am I talking about a bridge in rural Missouri? And even if I wanted to talk about old bridges for some reason, why this bridge? And not one of the thousands of other bridges just like it. In fact, you know, I've mentioned I've lived, I live here in Corvallis, and uh, Corvallis is a relatively small town in a, a relatively rural area. In fact, if I looked, I could probably find a bridge very similar to this within a relatively short drive of where I live. So why would I be talking about a, t a random bridge in rural Missouri thousands of miles from where I live? Well, truth be told, I have actually been deceiving you. You see, I've been referring to this bridge in the present tense. I've said this bridge is, this bridge is, etc. In fact, I should be referring to this bridge in the past tense. Alas, this bridge is no more. Unfortunately, on Monday of this week, uh, someone ignored these clearly posted signs. This is unfortunately what the bridge currently looks like, or at least what it did looked like uh, earlier this week. I'm sure they may have done some clearing efforts by now. As you can see, it is clearly a total loss. Uh, someone driving a semi-truck decided to try to cross the bridge. Uh, the Osage County Sheriff reported that the truck was carrying 40,000 pounds of feed, which means the cargo alone weighed 20 tons, plus whatever the weight of the truck was. Uh, now, uh, the weight of a semi-truck and cab uh, can vary, but an empty semi-trailer and cab, even on the low end, can easily weigh 30,000 pounds. So a 70,000 pound weight for this truck, uh, combined weight uh, truck and cargo, would be a low estimate. In other words, the driver attempted to load a bridge rated for 5 tons with a weight of 35 tons. As we said, structural engineers bake some margin into rated capacities, but not that much margin. The driver claimed he was trying to back the truck up, but that clearly doesn't make much sense. Maybe he tried backing up after he realized his error, but there were clearly posted signs to not take such a large vehicle onto this bridge. Uh, thankfully, at least the driver su uh, survived, but uh, unfortunately the bridge was a total loss. And the really infuriating thing? Well... To see the most really infuriating thing, I need to go back to Google Maps here. So I'm gonna leave Street View and go just right back to Google Maps. So here is the actual intersection uh, or the crossing that we were looking at where the small country lane, uh, County Road 611, crosses with Mary's River here in Osage County, Missouri. And so the Route 611 continues here, goes through a bit of a neighborhood, and then ends up eventually, if you go th uh, around a couple uh, corners, you end up uh, down here at U.S. Highway 63. Interesting. So let's take a look at Street View there. Same river. Mary's, uh, the Mary's River. Same exact river. 
and basically no more than a mile away, and here is a very large, very well-built, um, nice modern highway bridge, and you can see that clearly across this bridge were um, some uh, large semi-trailers that did not try to cross on the uh, over 100 year old bridge. They're doing the responsible thing and using a proper bridge. And that's what really makes me mad. There's a perfectly good modern highway bridge less than a mile from this bridge. But this guy tried to save a few minutes and he destroyed a historic treasure. This, think about this bridge. Think about what it has seen. Let, in fact, let's look again at this old-timey photo of the uh, bridge in its early days. Uh, think of what this bridge has seen over the generations. This bridge has stood for generations and easily could have stood for generations more. Now, yes, it certainly wasn't up to modern standards, but it was perfectly serviceable to carry light, local traffic, and really that's all it had to do. It could have easily kept going uh, for many decades into the future. It, it was just carrying small amounts of local load, you know, of local traffic, just 50 vehicles a day, that sort of thing. And again, it could have easily done so decades into the future. And think about this. This was a historic river bridge from 1893. It was built in 1893 by a company out of Kansas City that closed down in the 60s. So, and it was probably made out of steel, made right here in the U.S., probably in Chicago or uh, Minnesota or somewhere on the Great Lakes. Uh, somewhere on the Great Lakes. Uh, put together with it was put together with construction techniques that are now unheard of. A piece of the past that is, in every sense of the word, irreplaceable. And now, it's a pile of scrap on the bottom of a river. All because one guy tried to save five minutes of time. Stood for well over a hundred years, for generation after generation, and somebody tried to save five minutes, and now this historic treasure is dust. Anyway, I'm going to stop ranting before I give myself an aneurysm. I just saw this and had to talk about it. Uh, in regular channel news, the second lecture in the wood design series is now out, and feel free to check that out if it seems interesting. For now, if you found this informative or enjoyable, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to make the robots happy. If you want to help make angry grants like this possible, see the link to our Patreon page in the page's details. Regardless, I hope to see you all again soon in the next video, which hopefully will involve me a lot less angry. Additionally, please, for the sake of my blood pressure, please respect bridge weight limits. And as always, well, with the exception of the guy who broke the bridge, as always, thank you.